It's still before coffee, but I have it. <laughs> but I'm not going to let it get cold. <laughs> Flemish farmers protest in Brussels against nitrogen plans. Abe Lincoln visits with the Russians. Belarusian Nobel Prize winner Bielowski sentenced to 10 years in prison. Jury in the Murdoch murder case reach a verdict in probably record time. And more updates in the Ukrainian war conflict. And SpaceX launches four astronauts, including a Russian, into the space station. Uh, that and more, and before coffee. All right, let's look at the Flemish farmers getting angry over nitrogen. It has oh been boy. a conflict going on in the Netherlands for a long time. I don't know, I believe uh, in my editorial here, I believe all these farmers are being paid out by the companies who make money off of them. Yeah. The distribution of goods, the, the distribution mm -hmm. of, uh, of uh, grocery products, uh, right. these, they're getting told they're telling the farmers, hey, be angry, because our bottom line is affected by this. Not uh, yours, like right? Your them. life will be easier and the same, really. You just have, you know, you just have to reduce production. But the grocery companies are like, no, we're going to lose like 10% of our income. And we sh need, the farmers need to start ready, riding the, tra tra uh, the tractors down the street and yelling and honking. It's the only thing that will solve it. No, our money. <laughs> Anyways, enough editorializing. Let's look at what the news from NOS says. More than 2,000 Flemish farmers drove tractors to Brussels this morning to protest against the nitrogen poly of the Flemish government. They gather near the North Station. Just like in the Netherlands, nitrogen emissions in the Flanders area must be reduced. This leads to unrest among Flemish farmers who fear that the strict fertilizer regulations will lead to socioeconomic change. Oh, sorry, socioeconomic carnage, even worse, Party. carnage, in the agricultural se sector. The activists drove to Brussels this morning in 10 columns. There are a few problems on the highways, but the action does not lead to a lot of tra traffic disruption on local roads. The nitrogen discussion of Flanders started in February 2021, when a Flemish judge annulled a permit for the expansion of a chicken house because this house would lead to too much nitrogen emission. As a result, the existing rules came into question. To prevent a nitrogen crisis such, in the, such as in the Netherlands, the new Flemish rules had to be introduced as soon as possible about how much nitrogen that farming companies are allowed to emit. In February in 2022, the Flemish government concluded a political deal. This stated, among other things, that the 41 companies had to close within a few years. That decision led to a lot of anger within the Flemish agriculture sector. Farmers, agriculture organiza organizations, but also municipalities and provinces submit more than 15,000 comments and objections to the nitrogen agreement. The activists will drive around the center of Brussels in the early afternoon. As a result, traffic in the city is likely to come to a standstill. The plan is for farmers to leave around 2 p.m. There is no fuss about nitrogen yet in Wallonia, the French part of Belgium. This is because no lawsuit has been filed there. Biologist Tobias Hillumans of KU Leuve tells his newsblad, Het Newsblad, if there were if that were to happen, the discussion would not be any different because in Wallonia there is also intensive livestock farming and heavy agricultural places companies, and there are even more areas that must be protected to according to European rules. All right, farmers are angry, and also the companies that make money off of them. Also, a, a term, a, a, an opportunity for a nice alliteration headline like Flemish farmers. Yeah. yeah with like all Fs, you know, Flemish farmers. It's just a lot of words. Flabbergasted. Flabbergasted at federal fornication. I don't know. <laughs> federal <laughs> Whatever. For, fe federal fuckery. Into their, uh. well, I can't say the dirty word. 
<laughs> with their, uh, whatever. Anyway, I lost the thread. My mind isn't working. This is why this show is so quaint. So you can't actually script it. <laughs> um, and and uh, more international news, I guess. Uh, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, who I call Abe Blinken, because it's cool. This is a story by AP News and Matthew Lee. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov talked briefly Thursday at high level, in the highest level in person. He puts a lot of hyphens. Highest level in person talks between the two countries since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But there is no indication of any movement towards easing the intense tensions between the two nations. The short encounter came as relations between Washington and Moscow have plummeted over Russia's war with Ukraine and tensions have soared amid a myriad of disagreements, complaints, and recriminations on other matters ranging from arms control to embassy staffing and prisoners. U.S. officials said Blinken and Lavrov chatted for roughly 10 minutes on the sidelines of a G20 conference of foreign ministers in New Delhi, which Russia is still in the G20, even though they have no economy. In fact, uh, the famous uh, the famous oligarch uh, who's been bribing FBI agents, uh, Darius Sparov, or whatever his name is, uh, I'll, I'll get his name later. He's already telling he's he's telling people in like Belarus, Russia has no economy. We have no economy. We're going to run out of money in about six months, and there's nothing. Yeah. We're basically at that's it. We're a shell. We're nothing. Uh, no investment. We got no foreign investment thanks to all these sanctions. We keep our only real exports were raw materials, and we can't sell them to anybody right now because they've been embargoed. Or we, they, I'm sure they're selling, but it's just like you know, their customers: Iran, Syria, uh, and China. Of course, China is never going to cut them. Off. But uh, yeah, we're we're the world. The rest of us are the world, and we have definitely put them in a corner. Um, Blinken, uh, and this war of aggression, engaging meaningful diplomacy that can produce a just and durable peace, Blinken told, said he told Lavrov, but he noted that President Putin has demonstrated zero interest in engaging, saying there's nothing to even talk about unless and until Ukraine accepts, and I quote, the new territorial reality. So basically, Settle for peace, uh, Ukraine, or to keep bombing you, even though we're losing this war and nobody. It's not going to gain popularity as it goes on. That's not how wars work, by the way. I think Russia isn't behind their war. I don't think they are, but even if they were, they're not going to stay behind it. They're not going to continue behind it. How come we don't have any food? We don't have yeah. any food since this war started. Why? Why? And again, uh, some Nazis, they might have been Russian, they might have been. Uh, it might have been Ukrainian, but the, uh, some Nazis basically took over a town in Russia. Putin blamed it on Ukraine, but I think it was internal. And I think it was the people that are even farther right than Putin. So there's a danger in Russia of people even farther right than Putin taking over. Think of that. Anyway, so next story. It's too All depressing. Right. All right. Next story, we've got... Belarusian Nobel Prize winner Bielowski sentenced to 10 years in prison. Human rights activist Alice Bielowski has been sentenced to 10 years in prison in Belarus. This is reported by organization Via Sana, which he founded. Bielowski, Bielowski has been convicted of money smuggling and financing acti acti activities seriously disrupting public order. The Belarusian has been in prison for a year and a half. He was officially arrested for tax evasion at the time, but it's widely believed that he was arrested for political reasons, because it's Belarus. <laughs> so... There you go. Hero of Belarus, Belatsky 60, won the Nobel Peace Prize last year together with organizations from Ukraine and Russia. The activist became best known for support for political prisoners in his home of Belarus. The Human Rights Center, Viasana, which he founded in 1996, is considered the most important human rights organization in the country. Belarusian opposition leader Sve Svetlana Tichanovskaya speaks on Twitter of a fake trial and calls the sentencing simply horrible. Ales has dedicated his life 
to fight against tyranny. He is a true hero of Belarus and will be revered long after the dictator is forgotten. Human rights organizations estimate that there are about 100, oh, sorry, 1,500 political prisoners in Belarus. Many of them were arrested in 2020 when Belarusians took to the streets en masse to protest against Lukashenko, who had claimed the election victory. The protests were beautifully, brutally suppressed. Dictator Lukashenko has been in power almost 30 years. In Vilnius, people take the streets to protest against the trial. An action of solidarity with the human rights defenders, Viasani, who were sentenced long terms today, is taking place. All right. So. Well, since I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my first story since I referred to this part of it in the story. It's about the, the name I got wrong was Oleg Deripaska, the guy who bribed the uh, FBI agent mm -hmm. McConnell. The guy was under arrest. The guy was supposed to. Basically leaked the Hillary information is what he yeah. did. So he basically cost this election. So this rich guy, this Russian. Russia <coughs> Russia could run out of money next year, says Oleg Oligarch Oleg Deripaska. The oligarch this is from yesterday, so it's recent. Deripaska is a subject of US, US, UK, US, and EU sanctions over Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Said funds are running low, and that's why. They've already begun to shake us down, according to the Blue Park report. He said that Russia was suffering some serious pressure from Western actions and that the country and its business would have to look for other countries' serious resources to invest. We thought we were a European country, said Deripaska. Now, for the next 25 years, we'll think more about our Asian past. It comes comes as the European Ratings Agency scope warned that Russia's budget deficit may rise to 3.5% of gross domestic product compared with the government's forecast of 2%. In 2022, the official shortfall came at 2.3. Uh, so, um, to make the long story short, this is the next guy to fall out a window. Yep. And you can go do another story. I can do, uh, you do not have a second one? Oh, I can do my second story. And my yeah. second story, this is a quickie. Alex Murdoch found guilty in 24 minutes. Wow. 24 minutes. I swear to you, 12 people taking a bathroom break takes longer than 24 minutes, right? Yeah. They found him guilty in 24 minutes. I don't think I don't even think the audience had time to even take a back bathroom break, right? Yeah. Are you going to be sequestered for long? No, here's the verdict. No, at least pretend, <laughs> pretend that you don't know. Yeah. I mean, this guy made the worst witness I've ever seen on the stand. He gets on the stand and he's just got to sit there and defend every lie he's ever told. He can't even get around to saying anything in his defense. And even if he does, who's going to believe you? You lie. You're a liar. It's like, you should go work on Fox News because you can't. You think your lies are the truth and that doesn't even matter. Exactly. they're not the truth. Yeah. It doesn't even matter to you that they're not the truth. You don't care about the consequences. It's like, well, I'm in trouble. That's all that matters in the entire world. That's Fox News in a nutshell. We're in trouble. By the way, Fox News is probably going to have to fire the guy, um, what's his name? Rupert Murdoch is probably going to get fired. He only owns about 30-some uh, percent of the, the company anyway, so I think they can replace him. But either way, he's the guy that drives that train. But uh, the ver uh, the jury deliberated for less than three hours. It says less than three hours. I think it was a lot less than that. Murdoch guilty of two counts of murder, end of a six-week trial to pull back the curtain from once prominent lawyer's fall from grace. Murdoch, 54, faces 30 years to life in prison without parole. He's probably going to get life without parole because he killed two people. After the verdict was read, and by the way, his son was also on the hook for killing somebody. His son yeah. had uh, was out goofing around on the boat, drunk, and killed a young girl. So that, year, that young girl's family was cheated out of justice by this, because he killed his son Paul, who was basically <laughs> going to go to prison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this whole family, uh, kind of just a bunch of entitled, uh, you know, rich folks, mm -hmm. and uh, their matriarch is going. Or their, the matriarch is dead. The patriarch is going to prison. I don't know who's left, but again, it's uh, he's only facing life without parole, not the death penalty, 
Once again, rich man justice. <laughs> You're a pro death penalty. No, I would be for the death penalty if they applied it evenly, but they don't. Okay. And they absolutely if you can't afford a super super lawyer like oj simpson or something like that you're gonna get freaking the death penalty guarantee yeah they'll just they'll just stack the evidence against you what you gonna do Nothing. yeah your lawyer sucks next story all right my next story we will go over what's happened in the ukraine conflict since our last report yesterday as you as you may or may not know they were currently getting ready in the, what is it called, the Bakhmut region for more Russian in, in, um, forces to uh, start invading the region. They were encircling the city. Mm. Um, and also, some hostages were taken in the Bryansk region by supposed um, Ukrainian freedom fighters. Of course, Putin called out this action as a terrorist attack by Ukrainian saboteurs. Mm -hmm. And we had our own theory that has not been confirmed. And the reports are very confusing. Whether or not these are not Russians behind it themselves. As President Zelensky has said already yesterday. Um, but for Putin, therefore, is certain that the neo-Nazis have committed another terror test today. Just more propaganda. To enforce... Well, you know it's propaganda if yeah. they've already decided the story before they investigated it. Yeah. To enforce the uh, the enforce the war and the reason for the war. Yeah. Um, it's like Marjorie Taylor Greene blaming Joe Biden for somebody overdosed in 2019. Joe Biden was a private citizen in 2019. What the hell is he going to do about it? Uh, also happened yesterday, yeah. four people were killed in Zaprozia after a rocket attack on an apartment complex because everyone knows apartments are very dangerous. Uh, war machines then that can kill yeah. you so yeah. you must strike them out with missiles yeah, eight people were injured just, yeah, and four yeah. people were killed and part of the building was destroyed uh, years after the Russian withdrawal a missing person is identified near Kiev Chancellor Skultz refuses to talk to Putin from the Chancellor Skultz from the German Parliament does not want to negotiate with Putin. His speech was therefore not only addressed to Parliament, but also to the Germans who advocate peace negotiations with Russia. Although the majority of the population supports Ukraine, there also is a group that is uncomfortable with Germany's arms transfer to Ukraine. Some 30,000 people took the streets like the weekend to demonstrate against military interference in the war. Germany has led the way in arms deliveries to Kyiv. A radical break from the passive politics of 1945. Let's be honest. Uh, it's been a while since 1945. Most of the people who were alive during that time are either incredibly old or dead. So, yeah, no one remembers World War II. I'm sorry. Time has passed. Well, the uh, no one, there's are not there. many people alive who remember World War II. Right. You have to be 75 just to even. Boy, 77. If you're born in 1946, you're 77. Yeah. So you're, yeah. So you, nobody remembers it unless they're really old. But the thing is, you got to learn those lessons. And the lessons from World War II was, well, I guess Chamberlain, buddy of peace, Hitler. You know, I we yeah. have an agreement on a piece of paper with Hitler. Stalin, do you have an agreement with Hitler? No, you don't. So why anybody thinks uh, Putin's any different than Hitler? I have no idea. It's naked aggression. He just wants to acquire territory and make this place. You know, we ain't got enough resources in our. You know, little Russia here. So he's basically Hitler. Uh, I don't know. I don't see any real difference. Yeah. I mean, Although fighting in Bakhmut continues to intensify, there are still about 5,000 civilians inhabiting the area with no chance of escaping, according to Governor Pavlov. Free Krylenko of Donetsk region. They refused to leave the city. He called the situation in Bakhmut extremely tense. And uh, Ukraine repels 85 attacks, and Russia sees houses in Kyrgyzstan. The Ukrainian Air Force is said to have shot down a ground attack aircraft, a helicopter, and seven drones yesterday. In addition to Ukrainian troops have repelled 85 Russian attacks. The Ukrainian Army Command Report, Cameron Report, is an update on the fighting in the country. According to Kiev, Russian carried out 31 airstrikes and three rocket attacks, especially against civilian ill infrastructure in the regions of Donetsk, Zaporizhia, 
incursion. The Rukanian Air Force itself also managed to carry out attacks on enemy bases and Russian ammunition depots. The Army Command does not say whether those are attacks, where those attacks took place. Of course not. We can't reveal all details during an active war. That's it's crazy. <laughs> um, uh, Russia threatens to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine is admissible, foreign ministers of so-called Quad Group said in a joint statement. That group included United States, India, Japan, and Australia. Late last month, Russian President Putin suspected the new START nuclear arms control treaty and threatened to resume nuclear testing. If we let Russia do what it does in Ukraine with immune impunity, it sends a message to would-be aggressors everywhere that they might get away with it, says U.S. Secretary, Secretary of State Blinken. Um, air raid sirens are going off all over Ukraine at 8.43 a.m. today. In recent minutes, air warnings have been issued again in Ukraine at the Luhansk region and the Autonomous Republic of Crimea. Sorry, I can't. I can't read the the map. It's very small. Crimea, <laughs> uh, gotcha. More Russians are targeted for hate crimes in the UK due to the war. In the United Kingdom, more Russian citizens have been victims of violent attacks, threats, and vandalism in the past year. Reports Sky News based on its own research. New figures point to an increase in hate crimes related to war in Ukraine. A charity reports that children of primary school age are also targets of hate. An expert warns that the number of record crimes is probably the tip of the iceberg because many incidents go unreported. He also expects that the number of cases will not decrease as long as the war continues. Because everyone knows children who can't vote are the reason that Putin is currently invading Ukraine. Yes. And people that got the fuck out of Russia are actually supporting Putin. Give me a break, you know. Uh, it's yeah. just dumb. Like you're in. It's the same thing in China, right? With China and, and all the idiots who keep attacking people. Like China brought that disease. Well, maybe they did, but this person been living here since 1948. <laughs> Don't think they okay, did it. Yeah. Just go, go. You know, just go. It's Anybody that ever thinks about doing violence to anybody else should just kill themselves immediately. You solve everybody's problems. You're, well, the first, problem, you're doing the violence problem specifically and you're with in a racial violence is that pe is well because of the racial part, right? We yeah. there's humans out there who genuinely agree that like from me and you are different, different yeah. beings, right? I have genetics in me that has a planned biochemical attack in it, you know? Oh yeah, yeah that, right. the Chinese yeah. person's lived here since 1946, doesn't matter because they're Chinese and it's in their I genes have, to spread disease. I have disease. your genome mapped right here. Look at this one. You see this here? You see this little allele here? That's what's gonna cause you to butcher your family in the night. <laughs> yeah. No, that doesn't, that doesn't it's, it, it's eugenics. It's all, yeah. the old eugenics, you know? Which used to be the thing, it was like, the shape of your head he told people yeah. how smart you are, which is absolutely fucking nonsense. <laughs> the shape of your head? What does that have to do with anything? You can reshape you're your head stupid when or you're a child. Not. Here's how you yeah. figure out somebody's stupid. You ask them a question, listen for the answer, and go. <laughs> and maybe ask them another question, just to be sure. But that's it. It has nothing to do with anything else. <laughs> and here's another thing. If you give them information and they completely disregard it without even checking into it, they're stupid. They just don't know they're stupid. They think they're smart. They think they have all the information they need. Those are stupid people. You can go to your next story. SpaceX launched four astronauts into the Nas International Space Station for NASA on Thursday, including the first person from the Arab world going up for an extended month-long stay. The Arab Insert world. Insert racist terrorist joke here. Anyway. The Arab world. Yeah, well, this was written, sorry, we gotta give the byline. Marsha Dunn from Associated Press. So she's the one. The Arab world is a, an actual term. So or I'm the editor, sure. or the editor said, "Hey, can you change that to Arab world?" Editor. Yeah. You're funny. You're funny. Editor. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, the the Falcon rocket bolted from Kennedy. Kennedy. So uh, the Falcon rocket bolted from Kennedy Space Center. So Elon Musk is sending an Arab into space. I think he's doing it intentionally. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I think yeah. it's funny. Elon Musk. I, 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 I got my nickname for him, Apartheid Clyde. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> of South Africa. Yeah. That's great. I think it keep, Keith Olbermann came up with that. He might have stole it, too. He's still blush. He's a plagiarist. 
The Falcon, the Falcon Rocket. Don't sue me, Keith Olbermann, just because I called you a plagiarist. <laughs> Alright. No, I like Keith Olbermann. Nearly 80 spectators from the United Arab Emirates, which I can't pronounce. United Arab Emirates watched from the launch site as astronaut Sultan Al Niade, only the second Emirati to fly in space, blasted off in his six month mission. Half a world away, in Dubai and elsewhere across the UAE, schools and officers broadcast the launch live. This was big news in the Middle East. Also, riding the Dragon capsule that's due to the space station on Friday, NASA's Stephen Bowen, a retired Navy submariner who logged three space flights. Space shuttle flights. It's got to be sucked now, just be on some rocket. That space shuttle was that big yeah. thing. And Warren Woody Holberg, a former research scientist at Massachusetts at MIT, and a space newbie, Andrei Fedyayev, a space rookie who's retired from the Russian Air Force. Welcome to orbit! And again, he's Russian. He's a good guy. Has nothing to do with Putin, everybody. We like him. Okay. I just gotta say, you know, just because somebody's from a country doesn't make them. We gotta stamp them with that. <laughs> simple, simple people. Yeah. Turds. <laughs> I'm sorry, America. We're a bunch of turds. We just don't give a shit about anybody else. We just want to have our little secure little punching bags. <laughs> Where's my scapegoat? I can't live without a scapegoat. I'm in a dress! I, I'm in a dress! <laughs> uh, anyway. Jeez. Americans are terrified of a man in a dress. 50% of Americans. <laughs> I'm going to get my kilts, and I'm going to wear them every day. I'm going to get some kilts, different varieties, different colors, wear them every day, dance a jig, drive everybody crazy. Freedom, baby! Freedom! <laughs> Ain't for you to decide how I dress, you piece of shit. Anyway, <laughs> off on the subject. I'm a tangent, tangent man. I'm a tangent astronaut. That's what I am. You've launched me <laughs> into the nether regions of Tangentville, and I'm out here pumping in the subjects. Ah! Anyway, that's what caffeine does. It is mine. Any more news All right, on the first not? attempt to launch was called off Monday at the last minute because of clogged filter in the engine ignition system. Clogged filter? That sounds... Oh, really? How do, what would it get clogged filter? with? I haven't know. gone How anywhere we... yet. I think it's water. It's Florida. It's just... Oh, okay. <laughs> Enjoy. It may have taken two times. It's worth the trip, Bowen said. NASA Space Operations Mission... Kathy Luters said Thursday's launch enhanced the night sky, already showcasing a conjunction of Venus and Jupiter. Two plants have appeared side by side, seeming to grow ever closer. Now, if you ever get a chance, go to a rocket launch. And I'll tell you why. I don't care if you're a mile away and it's just a little flash in the distance. You will get a sound wave that will knock you on your ass. <laughs> yeah. Have you been to one? Yeah, out here oh, at the wow. beach. Yeah, they, nice. they launch them here in Virginia all the time. There's a NASA site. I've been there. Uh, they blew it up a few years ago, so they had to rebuild it. It accidentally blew up. You might have yeah. seen the papers. <laughs> but I've seen a rocket launch. I'm I'm way up at uh, Ocean City. This is in Virginia. This is down across the ocean, basically. But you can see it because they're up by the ocean. You can see the... So you see this flash. And yeah. you see this little thing going up in the air. And everybody's like... Eh, 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 nothing. People were turning and walking away, and all of a sudden, across the water, it comes this whoop, whoop. You can hear it coming. And then they fall on their face. Sound wave, yeah. and it just knocks people over, knocks beach chairs over. I was like, whoa. You know, so I almost fell over as I was standing on rocks. Yeah, so, oh yeah. Yeah, I was filming, and I was like, and I turned and felt stupid, right? Because I wasn't even thinking. Let me turn my dad's off and turn my camera off, and all of a sudden, whoop, fall, fuck, I'm back on the sound wave. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> anyway, your subject. All right. In media news, jazz saxophonist Wayne Shorter at 89 has passed away. Oh, man. I love me some jazz, so this is sad news. Though, though mm. I don't think I purposely listened to him. Makes I guess I will now. now. Now that he's passed away, now I have to listen to him so he can grow posthumously um, <laughs> after go. his death. 
Um, Jazz saxophonist and composer Wayne Shorter has passed away at the age of 89. Shorter only had a great repu- not only had a great reputation as a saxophonist, but also regarded as an influential innovator as the after author of the well-known jazz compositions such as Speak No Evil, Black Nile, and Footprints. He started his career in 1959 and made his breakthrough on in the 1960s as a member of the Art Blakely's Jazz Messengers. He then played with keyboard Herbie Hancock in so-called Second Quintet of Miles Davis from 1964 to 1968, succeeding the legendary John Coltrane. I know who that is. I've heard of John mm-hmm. Coltrane. Shorter wrote songs like ESP for Davis and Neferetti. Oh, I've heard that one. As far as I'm concerned, Wayne Shorter was the best composer of this band, Herbie Hancock once said. He was one of the few who gave Miles music that wasn't changed. After several successful solo albums, including Juju and Speak No Evil, Shorter started his jazz and rock fusion band Weather Report with keyboardist Joe Zwanul, Zawi Newell, which produced one of the best-selling jazz records ever with Heavy Weather in 1977. You know that one? I'm not a jazz enthusiast, but I'm familiar with Weather Report. Uh, okay. He also played bi- big names such as Joni Mitchell, Carol, Carlos Santana, and Steely Dan. Wow, he's played, but I know those guys too. Yeah. Joni Mitchell. <laughs> Leading yeah, his own bands, Wayne Shorter yeah. was also a Buddhist. Made over 25 records. He won 12 nice. Grammys, and in 2007 received a jazz prize in Concert Cabal in the Netherlands. Wow, he even... He even won a jazz prize in the Netherlands. Living into your 80s and being a jazz musician has got to be just... I mean, a lot of them guys just went on drugs. Yeah. So he, he navigated that uh, field well, and he lived a ripe old age. Well, it's, it's, it says it has not been declared with because everybody. his death. So maybe huh? he still died from a cocaine overdose, who knows? Nah, well, I don't think he was doing cocaine. Who wants no, to be I mean, doing cocaine? No, it says he here, he's, recently he's been too weak to perform and play the saxophone, so it probably was just ripe old age. So, 89. All right. Well, he got to express himself for long years. That's important, right? We, uh, we are left with all kinds of music that he played, and you can listen to it anytime. And again, he played with Miles Davis, which you get Miles Davis is basically like the, he's like the Elvis of jazz. Yeah. And uh, oh, he's even more than Elvis, because he had a band that other people got famous from, like Herbie Hancock. Herbie Hancock's still making music, still making great music. And he was with Miles Davis in like the 60s. Long yeah. Time ago. yeah. So, yeah, Miles Davis is like the, I don't know, the, the, the bitches brew, as he called it, right? <laughs> so. Anything All right, so time? this day... Oh, are we yeah. done? Sorry. Sorry, I was asking what you are about to say. Sorry. What's that? No, today, uh, yeah. today's birthday, uh, one of the greatest female athletes of all time, Jackie joyner Kersey, was born on this day in 1962. So she was born in my same year. So she's my age. So she was 61 today. She's also a uh, year of the... What are you... Year of the... uh, it was the year of the tiger. Year of the tiger. She's also year of the tiger. Yeah. Year of tiger just ended for me. Uh, is it Chinese New Year yet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the rabbit. Yeah, year now. of tiger just ended. Yeah, it's rabbit now. Ira Glass, American radio and television host, is born in 1959. Jean Harlow, American actress, born in 1911. Alexander Graham Bell, who is credited with inventing the telephone, although there's some. He might have. Stuck his application in the on inbox. On the top of the row, yeah. On the other guy's application that basically doing a carbon copy of or whatever, and they were all just stealing from each other anyway. But somebody gets credit, even though, right? Whoever gets the patent wins, yeah. Whoever gets the patent, whoever bribes the patent office wins. <laughs> That's the way of capitalism works. Sorry, guys. George, George Cantor, German mathematicians. Do Germans not have an E on the end of George? Because he doesn't have an E on his name. Maybe it's also Gordon. on this day. George Bush. I think this is the day he puked on a Japanese guy. <laughs> Why is, is that a newsworthy newsworthy event? 
No, I, no, it wasn't. No, they said George Bush was beaten with the Japanese. No, it was a famous event when he was uh, he was uh, in in Japan meeting with the Prime Minister of Japan, and he got some bad whatever sushi or something. Turned pale white right next to the frickin' Prime Minister, puked on him, and passed out. <laughs> That's famous, isn't it? I don't think this was it, though. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it doesn't mention it. <laughs> but it brought to my mind that famous incident is like, that's not going to happen. Imagine <laughs> if Joe Biden did that. Puked on the floor. That's embarrassing, and yeah. And, and then, like, the Secret Service is like, the doctor is like, is he dead? <laughs> we don't know. Huh? Dad, we got Dan Quayle now. Huh? Dan Quayle. Oh, Lord. You don't even know who Dan Quayle is. Be grateful. I'm glad I don't know who that is. He was the vice president of the United States for four years, and he was about as smart. Well, you know, like you can't compare him. There's worse people around now. There's worse. Far Dan Quayle would be a breath of fresh air about now. But he he ran for vice president against a mythical TV character named Murphy Brown, played by Candace Bergen. He cited, "Women should not be having children by themselves out of wedlock." Or not, not, not. And everybody's like, "Dan, it's a TV show." TV show. Yeah, but it's telling her children stuff. I'm like, you think children are watching Murphy Brown? <laughs> it's a show about uh, a reporter and the newspapers. It, it ain't Romper Room. It ain't Sesame Street. <laughs> but again, he's worried. American society is... Uh, like, it's American society has been winning awards all this time. Or something. Huh? You know, they have awards every year about the best society to raise a kid. The best guy for the new year in a row. Oh, like, this doesn't <laughs> exist, man. You're worried about your kids. Why are you worried about your kids and my kids? Your actual kids are going to go marry a hell's angel. They're going to get herpes. They're going to get 75 tattoos. And you're never going to see them again. Because you're worried about everybody else's kids. Yeah. Morons. <laughs> and that's the happy news for today. Anyway, uh, what else? Uh... But 1991, here's some more happy news. Following a high-speed chase, Los Angeles police officers treated Rodney King as a pinata. Despite the videotape of the beating, the policemen were acquitted in the case in 1992, causing large-scale rioting. Well, that happened. The ah. Rodney King beating happened 1991. Right this today? Day. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it took them months to acquit those police officers, and then there's riots in L.A. for days, right? They moved the trial to Simi Valley, which is in a different county, for the white people! <laughs> so it would be fair! <laughs> How is it fair because there's white people? Give me that freaking definition, please. They're not going to have any bias against a black man who can be in the street. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. We can't have this trial in Los Angeles because of the publicity. Let's move it to Simi Valley. Yeah, they don't have TVs there. <laughs> it, was a, it was a disaster. Those yeah. cops were eventually found guilty by the federal government for what they were doing, which was violating his civil rights. It's like, you pull over or we're just going to beat the hell out of you. Not pulling over, not pulling over is against the law, to be sure. He was breaking the law, to be sure. But, cop's job is to arrest him. Detain him, arrest him. A judge and a jury will find him, perhaps. But the cop's job is basically handcuffs on him. There was a bunch of cops there, enough to detain him. They get this idea that every black man is going to kill him. I don't know why. Even the black cops do. You saw it in Memphis. Yeah. Totally unarmed guy. Totally unarmed. Scared out of his mind. You guys are going to beat the shit out of me. And he runs. Of course he runs. I mean, last, last beat night. beat the shit my, out of me. My YouTube, anyway. my YouTube shorts got really crazy because I, was, I watched one video of like uh, an Uber driver who's also a lawyer okay. not putting his phone know. down. Yeah. Right? And then, now, and then all my YouTube shorts were like, hey, you want to see more police violence? And then it was like every yeah. single time, it was like a police officer going, put your phone down. And then the guy going, it's my right to hold my phone. You can tell yeah. it's a phone. It's like, we're going to shoot if you don't put your phone down. 
I'm sorry, since when has phones been a weapon of mass destruction? Like, I can't kill you with my phone, so I'm not exactly sure why you're threatening to shoot me because I'm holding a phone. <laughs> you are not in any danger, officer, so I'm, take me to court. For I was in, I was being threatened by their phone, and they were gonna kill me. This is the actual reason why, like, remember when that 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 meteorite hit Russia a few years ago, and a lot, so many people got it live on video on their car, their dash cams, and everybody's like, why does everybody in Russia have a dash cam? They have a dash cam because the cops are crooks. <laughs> they pull yeah. you over and they're looking for a bribe, or they're gonna take you to jail. Also, there's so, so many everybody got crashes a dash cam happening now. in Russia that you need the, for the insurance claim. <laughs> <laughs> so Americans are learning. I mean, everybody's got a phone now, but I think a dash cam is even better. You can just point it at yourself. Oh, the cops pull me over. The, the dash cam, turn it on, point it at yourself, and go, wait for the cop to accuse you of something. Or if you're filming yourself while you're driving all the time. A lot of people yeah. do that. And uh, I saw one where the girl got pulled over for not having a seatbelt, right? Yeah. During the video, she's driving, cop pulls in behind her, a blonde, right? Yeah. She's like, oh shit, that can't be for me. She finally pulls over the cop's like, you weren't wearing a seatbelt. And she's like, I don't, I just took it off. I got a dash cam that shows me just taking it off. And she, the, she didn't get a ticket. But the guy pulled her over to flirt with her. That's all it was. She wasn't doing nothing. I guaranteed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I was like, you know why she got pulled over. He's a perv. He thought he was going to get somewhere. You know, I could give you a ticket. Or you can give me a phone number. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've gone past time talking All about right. how <laughs> messed All right, up. That's today's, that's yeah. today's mess. Sorry. <laughs> today's police today's violence and Russian coffee. propaganda. This has been Allison from <laughs> Europe. Hoping that uh, farmers will stop protesting nitrogen regulations because it's really not the hill you want to die on. Hope to no. see you. Um, wait, what's today's Friday, right? So I hope to see today's you next Friday, week. Friday. That's why it's extra long <laughs> yeah. and extra angry. Yeah. Because I get all this week's frustration out. Hope to see you next week for some more news over the weekend. Hope you have a nice sunny day and it's the weather's good. See you next time. Enjoy March Madness. Be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and notify buttons, and follow our other channels, Toxic Alley, History of Gravy, and Scratchy Old Records.